Welcome everyone, Tactical Itch here, and today we have another stream. Yeah, we have been doing daily streams the past few days. Um, this time we are streaming a few battle replays from the finals of the Ladies Quest Season 3 tournament hosted by the old EM clan. The players in the finals are Strat Game and JMG, both very good players. So we will be checking out those replays soon. Now, before that, we do want to wait for a couple more minutes and see if any more viewers show up. But yeah, um, let me just quickly make a few more posts just because uh, we're going to post it in some random Discord. Post the link of the video. Uh, yeah, in a few Discords. And yeah, that should be everything. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now we have started the stream. Everything is set. We are good to go with our first replay. Now this is a uh, this tournament has been going on for quite a while. It's like a it's like a long term event where players just. There are two stages in the earlier stage. Players played in groups and try to play against um, every opponent in their group. And whoever the two best players move on to the next stage, and the third player will be playing in the third place playoff, where third places in different groups will be competing against each other too. And the top two will be in the top two. No, no. Yeah. The. Um, Third place players will be competing in groups of three and the top two players in every group will be moving on to the next stage as well And as we saw we have um, We managed to have 16 players and I managed to go through two stages. Uh, I managed to go into the finals as well played in uh, the best 16 and then played in the quarterfinals as well, but then the green one beat me up pretty hard He is a very good player but in the finals, we have Strike Game and JMG playing as in the first battle, playing as the Bretonians and the Tinge. Let's see what will they bring to the field. Both are very good factions, uh, very meta. When you're playing it the right way, uh, for the Bretonia, we have the very strong Grail Knights plus two Pegasus Knights. These are just regular Pegasus Knights, so no magic attacks, but they do have uh, the Knights. Yeah, they don't have the Blessing of the Lady. Um, they're just not expensive enough for you to invest extra into that attribute. But um, yeah, we have five, six archers, two of them with pox arrows, two of them with fire arrows, five men at arms with sword and shield, and three more men at arms with spears and shield. We have the Knights of the Lionhearted as well, without a second Grail Knight. These guys are the closest thing to a Grail Knight. Um, if, you're, if you discount the Regiment of Renowns. They have magic attacks, um, good, ma very good melee stats, and yeah, 40, 41 attack, 36 defense. The Grail Knights have less melee stats than the Knights of the Lionhearted, if anything. They just have more AP and more HP and, well, the most OP thing of all, bulldozing uh, their way through infantry, their insane mass. Anyways, we have a front line of uh, men and arms mixed in, and uh, Albrecht de Bordeloup would be leading the army. A little bit of a uh, soul grinder bombardment already going on right now, chipping away the health of Albrecht de Bordeloup. You can see that there's a mark on the ground with the warp flame or the magic missile scorching the earth. Now the um, Soul Grinder on the team side will be opening up onto the Grail Knights because the high missile strength and anti-large aspect of the projectile means that it can actually do some really good damage and snipe out models of the Grail Knights. Already taken down one model and it has decent range as well so it will be shooting. While in the main formation there we have a lot of Chaos Warriors backed up by Chosen's with Halberds. Ooh, this is a very elite force of uh, Tinge Army. Just everything is anti-large armor piercing and 
the Teen Army seems to be kiting back a bit right now. Spawns of Teen also acting as a bit of a mass of a mass blocking. And in the skies there, the Chaos Saucer of Teen needs to back off because he does not want to tangle up in this Bretonian Air Force. Wait, hold on a second. Okay, cool. Everything's going on just fine. All right. All right, the Screamers have dropped down onto the ground so that they won't get caught in the skies, I think. But no, it seems like they they flew back up into the skies and now will be swarmed by the Double Pegasus Knights. While the Chosens and the Chaos Spawns are taking some damage from the Archer line. Although the Teen Sorcerer Lord has did a lot of damage with the blue uh, with the pink fire, blasting away the peasant uh, peasant bows, and one of them has been routed. But all these archer lines are shredding through those lightly armored chaos bones. While on the far side, the great knight didn't really take much damage, as the um, as the soul grinder was kind of distracted by all those archer fire and the pegasus knight hounding them. While the Soul Grinder is now aiming at Arbor de Bordelou, doing some noticeable damage, but all that can be healed back up by a little bit of a Earth Blood or Regrowth healing. While the Pegasus Knights will be swarming the poor Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Teen. He has high armor, but that doesn't mean sh much uh, when you're dealing with some elite anti-large combatants. And on the ground, the spawns of Teen are pretty much down to their last bit of HP. Pegasus Knights diving down onto the spawns as well, while the Chaos Warriors and Chosens are struggling to threaten the Archer line at all. The Grail Knights and the rest of the cavalry are also still looking, eyeing these um, Teen infantry. And the Grail Knights charging straight into the Chaos Warriors of Teens. The Halberds should do some good return damage to the Grail Knights and taking down quite a few Unimodels as well. But the Archer line is still devastating the Teen formations here, being outranged and all that. The thing is that the Grail Knights have taken a lot of damage so far. Now that the Soul Grinder is aiming at the elite Bretonian cavalry and the Pegasus Knights are not actually doing the work they need to carry this game, especially that there are still so many Chosens and Halbert Warriors standing by. The Grail Knights might be their only hope to deal with all these elite Teen infantry as the men at arms are being steadily grind down by the armor and elite stats. Another pink fire at the back there hitting two units of archers doing some very noticeable damage and at this point the Chaos Sorcerer Lord is getting quite a bit of kills obliterating a lot of these Bretonian archer line the archers are continuing to fire away and doing some good damage to the Chaos Warriors and the spawns alike. But the thing is that I don't see how Bretonians can deal with all these Halbert infantry. The Soul Grinder is still shooting now. The Grail Knights are down to 37 unit models while Alberic the Bordelou is desperately trying to snipe out the Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Tinge. He is doing some pretty good work after he does have very good anti-large melee stats, especially when buffed up by the Braid of Bordula, adding extra bonus versus large. And the Teen Kill Sorcerer Lord on the disc is a large model indeed, but the problem is that the Halberds are coming in and are grinding down all those heavy cavalry of the um, Bretonian army. A little bit of a double AoE damage, the Pink Fire blasting two units of archers and then the Bombardment. Level 3 ability obliterating two units, both of these um, yeah, both of these peasant bows. They are pretty much the second most threatening unit against the Halberds right now. As their missile damage can accumulate a lot of work against the uh, regularly rather tanky Chaos Warriors and Chosen. Now the back there isolating the Soul Grinder. The Bretonian army is getting a little bit of a single entity snipe going on there. Outbreak and the Pegasus Knights beating up the Soul Grinder. But his 90 armor plus physical resistance means that a lot of that damage is actually mitigated given that the Pegasus Knights do not have the most armor piercing and the blobbed up Halberds are now flooding forward trying to support their single entity. At the back there the archers are firing in and the um, spearmen at arms, regular men at arms are just trying to pile in and support the fight against all these chosen to actually just tying them down with sheer amount of numbers and the grail knights are charging in slamming into some of these chosen but another pink fire this time hitting three units of archers uh well slightly singeing the third one but this one got obliterated and probably won't be coming back a regrowth 
dropping on top of the um, real knight getting quite a bit of hp ref and vigor refresh but the problem is that they have lost quite a few unit models and once they hit once every unit model has healed up to their max hp just like now their healing doesn't do them any good Still, good news is that the Kale Sorcerer Lord of Teenge has been broken off and probably will be escorted off the battlefield. All the Grow Knights, well, will be ramming straight into battle, hoping to snipe out the Teenge Sorcerer Lord, actually shattering, sniping it out with the help of Albert de Baudelou. In disguise, the Pegasus Knights are still holding, but this whole unholy blob of Halbert Infantry, elite heavily armored, will be a huge issue right now as they are beating back wave after wave of peasants and peasants are breaking upon them like waves breaking upon boulders now the soul grinder will be moving on trying to snipe uh, trying to work down the grail knights and the grail knights right now probably should turn off their lance formation because they are fighting against an, a rather elite single entity monsters with um, is there bonus versus large and melee? no actually no but either ways it seems that the Bretonians are able to wreck the Soul Grinder, and with the Soul Grinder out of the battle, the mere infantry of the Teenage Army will not be able to carry this game under all the cycle charging and crossfire from the Archer line as well. And that will be the Bretonians' victory first game going to Strat Games. Now, to prevent spoilers, I'm actually downloading all the replay files into a separate folder and before we switch to the next battle, we'll, I'll just copy that battle uh, replay file into the um, Creative Assembly Warhammer folder. So, um, I know how many games there are, but you guys don't know. And uh, for me, I know also know that, um, well, actually, I don't know what happened in each battle because I have not checked them out. So, uh, yeah. I know as much about the whole process of battle as every single viewer, and I'm excited to see them. The first battle, um, Strike Games and JMG putting up a great fight. We have a very interesting build from JMG, really. The Halbert Infantry really uh, holding themselves in battle. Unfortunately, the problem is that the Archer line is a little bit too threatening to the spawns of Teenge there. Just obliterating their poor uh, their poor HP bar with the lack of armor protection. I don't know what else would be better to replace these spawns of Teenge. Perhaps Savage Claw even. Um, but yeah, I do think that spawns, of, spawns in general is just not a good pick into Bretonians. They have too much anti-large and missiles. Um, but yeah, the Chosen is really doing some solid work, grinding down those heavy cavalry. And uh, I do like the pick of the Soul Grinder. If it, like, if it was able to dump all its ammo onto the Grail Knights, it can actually effectively ruin the Grail Knights because the high missile damage on the Soul Grinders can pick off unit models on the Grail Knights, preventing the healing to keep the unit model high, keeping the unit in full strength. Uh, reducing the damage output and also just general fighting prowess as the Grow Knights loses models. The regrowth from Strike Games was a bit hasty, I feel like. Um, well, not hasty, but let me think. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, actually, the regrowth was good um, on the Grow Knights, but definitely a little bit too late. Because regrowth comes in with one, a ton of healing to a single unit, and two, Vigor Refresh. The Vigor Refresh doesn't do shit to Grail Knight since they already have perfect Vigor. And after losing so many unit models, the Grail Knights were just not benefiting from the healing because the unit models are all topped up in terms of health. And Regrowth does not resurrect dead combatants. So a lot of that healing potential was wasted. Um, the Knights of Lionhearted and the Pegasus Knights didn't do much. Oh, actually, actually this, this one Pegasus Knight did a lot of damage. Uh, probably they managed to surround the Soul Grinder and beat it down, but uh, the other cavalry didn't do much work. Most of the work were done by peasant archers, of course, getting most of their value back. Actually, getting all of their value back in total. Just a very cost-efficient, cheap missile unit. Two of them even getting a chevron. Um, Albert the Baudelou did some pretty good work sniping out the Kill Sorcerer Lord and the Teen Soul Grinder. While the infantry here, it's peasants, so not much to talk about. 
And uh, on the other side, yeah, the halberds just didn't have the time to grind out everything because the key units, the two monster, monstrous infantry, the soul grinder and the chaos sorcerer lord are all sniped out. The chaos sorcerer lord blue, uh, blue fire would be great at sniping out grail knights, but pink fire um, did a lot of good work against the uh, peasant archers as well. So most of that value and kill count were damage accrued from the pink fire cast, I believe. While the spear men at uh, the Screamers of Teen getting very man value. They are good anti-large armor piercing units, but they are also very glass cannon. So once they get counter charged by the anti-large Pegasus Knights, they don't have the armor to survive or the melee defense to survive and just kind of died straight up. Okay, so the first battle is dealt with. Now we go on to the next battle. Let me just switch the... Let me just switch the uh, update the scoreboard, and yep, the first game uh, gone well for Strat Games. Now we are moving on to the next game, which is a Dawi versus Ogre Kingdoms battle. No, oh, hey guys, hey Swiss Pike man and Thai guy and Strat Game. No worries, man. Always down to watch some quality replays and yeah. The Ladies Quest tournament always has some really good battles with uh, the high quality players. So we are going in with the Dwarves versus the Ogre Kingdoms. Uh, dwarves going for double Thane, one of them the Hans, the Ethereal Thane, and leading the army of course Thoric Iron Brown. Like you can't, you kind of just expect to see him in general and uh, yeah two cannons, two dwarf cannons, two brimstone guns, three long beards, one with great weapons, two with axe and boarding, um, and uh, two quarrelers, five miners with blasting charges and a single dwarf warrior. On the other side, we have ogre kingdoms, two stone horns. I don't know if picking the regular stone horn is a good choice. Is it the regular stone horn? Yeah, it's the regular stone horn because you don't have anti-air fire uh, against any gyrocopters, which... Well, the strike games did bring over here. A front line of nobblers with their trapper, their throwing knives, and on the flanks we have some saber tusk packs and a Mornfang cavalry with iron fist that is getting blasted by the grand uh, by the dwarf cannons. We also have a unit of iron guts for some anti infantry armor piercing attacks. And uh, just a lot of iron fist Mornfang cavalry in general. Leading the army, we have Slaughtermaster of the Great Mole coming in with only Trollguts and nothing else, not even barely slapper or extra ingredients. And at the beginning already, things are not looking too great for the Ogre Kingdoms, I do believe. One of the Monfang Cavalry is getting obliterated by all those cannon fire. Yeah, the two cannons just sniping it out. While the Brimstone Guns are chipping away the health of the Stone Horns and the Saber Tusk Packs. While strike games here uh, with the dwarf army is just setting up a whole, <laughs> setting up a whole box, um, but the stone horns doesn't care about box. While the crushers with crushers of iron fist just plow straight through the first layer of defenses of the dwarves, and now moving on to the second, actually silencing some of these miners who still manage to get out some of those blasting charges. The box of the Dao is kind of breaking right now, and uh, all these Monfang are charging in trying to silence all those dwarf missile power but Thoric will be moving in and alongside with his double flames one of them the armor piercing ethereal flame doing some pretty good damage already against the stone horn while the back there the slot master took some damage possibly from the brimstone guns and the brimstone guns are unopposed right now with nothing nothing to shoot them or um, pressure them at all this oh we're on the southern chaos waste I think so we are kind of lagging due to the um, map having issues. But anyways, the miners with blasting charges are clearing out all those nobbler trappers, trading really cost efficiently with their uh, explosive damage, while the um, Dwarf Hero Hammer Squad, double thane, one of them hands and one of, and then Thoric Ironbrow is beating back all those poor Monfang cavalry. The double stone horns are leaping around the battlefield, trying to silence the um, Dwarf missiles with a bit of psycho charging but they might still face a little bit of issue when they're dealing with Thoric and um, the double planes. Two very 
all three of them are pretty solid combatant as far as melee goes. And yeah. Like, they they need to do some serious ch cycle charging to have a chance to win. Balance of Power is still that even, which means it might be slightly favorable for the for the Ogre Kingdom since they do have healing. However, there's some nice damage coming from the Rune of Wrath and Ruin from Thoric Eyebrow chipping away out of the Noblet Trappers. And the Ogre Kingdoms are beating, are fighting back hard. The Iron Guts here taking quite a bit of damage and at the back there, the Crushes with Iron Fist are getting topped up with a Troll Gut healing. Well, on the far side there, some Nobblers have been dealt with by the Miners, but then a little bit of a focused charge from all the Stonehorns, uh, Crushers, Mornfan Cavalry should be able to make short work of these Dwarf Infantry. Of course, they are Dwarfs, so they are rather stubborn and will be holding on in this combat for a little bit longer. While in here, the Longbeards with great weapons are holding up just fine. They have, they've done some okay damage, considering they still have plenty of health left, and have been cutting down Iron Guts and whatnot. More Longbeards are consolidating in this blob, and the Dwarf Army is doing just fine with the Gyrocopters here, continuously pounding the, yeah, continuously pounding the Ogre Monstrous. Monstrous Cavalry, uh, Crushes with Iron Fist has missile block chance, but I don't think they actually block Brimstone Guns, which are basically a mobile artillery piece. I don't think that's small arms fire, so yeah, the missile block chance probably doesn't work against them. Anyway, somehow the gy wait, how how the hell did the gyros drop in here? Uh, makes no sense, but um, somehow the Crushers also let them get away instead of trying to like chase down the miners with blasting charges and now the last few volleys of the brimstone guns should be able to do some pretty good damage to the remaining crushers and stonehorn and the back there stonehorn is just leaping around the battlefield trying to pick off all those isolated dwarf elements there uh, some scattered callers miners and just more miners around the battlefield makes them prime target for the cycle charging of stonehorns every time they charge it does a lot of impact damage I know there is an upper limit for splash damage, but when you're producing a charge impact, that splash damage um, limit doesn't apply. Whatever unit that gets pushed over by the charge impact will get damage for sure. So yeah, things are pretty rough for the dwarfs right now. As the ogres probably still have plenty of healing left, but the ogres also are running low on HP for the crushers. Another Trogus dropped in trying to keep their health high, but this is actually a pretty good target for the Brimstone Guns because if you're shooting at the Stonehorns, then a lot of that damage will be mitigated by the 20% of missile resistance. Now Stonehorns is leaping into this blob, but the Rune of, Slo Rune of Slowness is slowing him down. Combined with the Frostbite effect, if Hans ever gets a hit in, they should be able to do some good damage to the stone horn, but um, the stone horn is still a little bit too fast for Thoric to catch up. He only has 30 speed while the stone horn, even after Rune of Slowness, a uh, non overcast version, has 36 speed. So he is getting out of there while the rest of the um, dwarf units are just trying to blob up and uh, surround, the dwarf, uh, surround their um, ogre enemies. On the far side there, finally, the crushers are almost at the heal cap. While the Stonehorn here is still just kind of uh, leaping around. We might fast forward a bit here as we are in a bit of a chasing uh, mouse and a uh, cannon mouse phase. Um, Noblet Trappers are blasted by some miners um, while the Iron Guts have been caught up by the pursuing Gyrocopters. Yes, that's right. The Gyrocopters have used up all their ammo and are now jumping into melee combat trying to slow down and pin in those Iron Guts so that the slower Dwarf Infantry and their single entities can follow up. The Ethereal Thane actually has slightly more speed than Thoric Ironbrow, I think, yeah. And, and yeah, it actually has slightly more speed than the rest of the Dwarf Army, like 32, wait, 32 speed? Oh, Thane almost has 32 speed, so has slightly more speed than Thoric Ironbrow and once he lands hit onto Iron Guts, the Frostbite effect of the Ethereal Thane will be able to slow them down, but I don't think that is needed any longer because the Iron Guts are pretty much done and the Stone Horns are just on the far side, still psycho charging stuff to death. Um, but yeah, 
the crushers here are trying to jump in to this melee combat possibly was trying to uh, save the iron guts but unfortunately some of their unit models got caught in this unholy blob of uh, dwarf hero hammer plus uh, infantry and uh, even if the stonehall managed to charge in and did some good impact damage to the miners it is not enough to rout those miners because the presence of their leaders have inspired the regular dwarf infantry the stonehall tries to exit this blob but the Gyrocopters, despite running out of ammo, they are still a large unit model. So they actually got dropped into melee combat, trying to pin in the Stonehorn in melee combat, or at least slow it down, uh, slow it down so that it couldn't extricate in itself from the melee blob as fast as possible. Giving buying more time for Hans and Floric to do damage as the Stonehorn was stuck in combat. Now the next Stonehorn jumps in, uh, receiving a ton of Trogat's healing, but Things are still looking rather even. The tenacity of the dwarves are very, very impressive. Never underestimate the stubbornness of the Dawi as they are now holding on in this tight blob formation, making sure that every time the ogres trying to charge them will be forced to pay a bloody price. Uh, once again, we are going into fast forward. We are seeing a lot of lag here because the map issue or the map issue and my laptop issue i don't know um so whenever whenever i play whenever i play and i replay on this map it always lacks and uh, stutters for some reason either ways the nobblers no longer hold up their leadership despite just shooting some pretty good damage overall earning back their worth uh with the accumulated damage this one not so much but they're also blasted by the bomb drops from the gyrocopters not that there are any better targets to bomb drops at this point, so might as well just drop them on the nobblers, flint out their numbers. Now the Stonehorn leaps in, and opening up an opportunity for the crushers to jump in as well. But Thoric and the two things are still super healthy right now, while the brimstone guns are just standing by, ready to charge in for a, to produce that rear charge penalty. Anyways, right now it is just. Thoric double things plus a little bit of uh, those are long beards, right? Yeah, I think it's long beards holding for the, a quick second here. But now, no, these are dwarf warriors. Okay, the last of the dwarf infantry has been routed, leaving only the double thing Thoric and the two brimstone guns in the fight. Now it has two stone horns trying to beat down all these dwarf infantry. Well, not quite infantry, but the uh, the dwarf. The dwarf toilet seat and the, the double thane. And every time they charge in, they're paying once again a bloody price. Being frostbitten, um, being hit by a frostbite from Hans Valhersen, the Stonehorn is taking substantial damage while the armored gyrocopters are now dropping into the nobler trappers, trying to push them off. And the double thane are seriously holding in this battle with 50 melee attack and 55 melee defense. They are holding just fine. Actually, Hans Valhersen has even better melee sets. 65 attack, 50 melee defense. Um, also, armor piercing and frostbite and all that. He is a great weapon infantry. He doesn't have shield. Instead, have a two-handed axe and is a swing hard. And the crushers and the double stone horns are all just suffering heavily every, day, every time they charge in. Because Floric also have very good armor piercing stats. Combined with his physical resistance of 25%, he is tanking just fine. And every time, every time the ogres charge in, they they leave with a bloody nose as the dwarfs punch back. Even the, um, yeah, the gyros are charging into melee combat as well, just trying to apply that rear charge penalty while the stonehorns struggles to perform effective cycle charging. Yes, they are doing damage to Thoric, but the leadership of the dwarves is just too much for them to break the dwarf right now the crushers with iron fist charges in once more probably one last time and they will be broken while the stone horns are slowly getting whittled down with their hp running low of course the thanes also uh, the thane and thorax hp is running low but hans is still holding just fine he is also unbreakable so you need to kill him unfortunately very unfortunately, you need to kill him before you can do anything, uh, before you can even win. So, this is pretty bad for the um, ogres now, as they do not have the most solid leadership. One of the stone horns are wavering, 
and the other is running low on HP as well. This is why I would say a Stonehorn Hunter would be better because you have that kind of armor piercing anti lock damage that you can just sit back and shoot at uh, Thoric Ironbrow. Of course, he does have those missile resistance and physical resistance, but it is still better than just charging in every time and just suffering a lot of damage, right? But anyways, Thoric is almost dealt with. It is just Hans Valhersen, that is a main issue now. And Hans does have some terror that can be effective against the Slaughter Master with even lower health now. Um, and the Double Stone Horns are cycle charging hard, breaking the flame. But Thoric, uh, Thoric is dead. Thoric is dead! So this might be a bit dicey, but Th Hans Valhersen is still so very, so very healthy. Now the Stone Horn charges in trying to break him, but. He is just holding with his physical resistance. Slot Master starts cycle charging as well, but the Stone Horn no longer holds. With only 32 melee defense, he cannot protect himself against the 65 attack of Hans Valhersen. And with that, the Slot Master was forced to be thrown into battle, but then his leadership drops low. Same goes for his HP. The terror of Hans Valhersen kicks in, and the Stone Horns will be slaughtered. The Dawi will be holding their ground and yeah Hans Valhersen <laughs> carrying this fight against the Ogre Kingdoms I was actually predicting Hans would be a thing after people start shitting on Felix and Gotrek or like trying to ban him because Hans is just pretty damn good for like a lord he has armor pi not, not a lot but hero not a lot of melee heroes have armor piercing and Hans Valhersen is one of them um, 3,300 gold worth of damage value, cutting down a lot of health on the stone horns and uh, crushers as well. Thoric also did well, but uh, most of the damage was really done by Hans Valhersen. Uh, the Flame also did well, considering how little armor piercing he has. He, he is not my primarily armor piercing. He just have a shield, so he's slightly tankier than Hans Valhersen. But that is also uh, counteracted by Hans having physical resistance, while the Ogre Kingdom's not having the most physical, uh, not having the most magic attacks. Pretty much only the Fire Belly can provide them with a flaming sword of ruin. Now, for the rest of the army here, the missile contingent on the ground didn't really do that much damage because there's nothing the dwarves can do to stop the Stonehorns from bulldozing their way into the middle of the box. The dwarves simply do not have that mass to pin down a towering monstrosity like that of the Stonehorns. Brimstone guns did pretty well. Uh, they did some good damage overall, earning about one. 1.5 times their own uh, worth. So pretty good overall, especially in the late game there, providing those cycle charges and uh, chasing off those nobler trappers was quite key in uh, acting as the makeshift mobility of the dwarf army. The longbeards were mostly there just to hold the line. They did hold the line, but they didn't do much damage, mostly just taking damage and uh, supporting their uh, lords and characters. The miners with blasting charges did kind of okay. I guess they clear out a lot of nobblers, which is quite important in eliminating a very cost-efficient part of the Ogre Kingdom's army. Stonehorns did amazing with their cycle charges. The dwarves simply can't do shit against their um, annoying charge animations and insane mass. While the um, Slaughtermaster getting very minor damage, mostly he was there just for the troll guts healing. He can do some okay damage with um, with a bit of armor piercing if I remember correctly, I forgot. But yeah, I mean I don't really care about the melee stats of the of the Slot Master anyways. But uh, yeah, One Fan Cavalry did very poorly. I am still not a big fan of One Fan Cavalry. Crusher with Iron Fist also didn't do great. He, it's probably better to just get some lead belchers in this instant. Like you can't really outrange the um, cannons but if your stone horns manage to get in to the dwarf box silence their artillery then your lead belchers can just shoot everything from the far side or something to that effect and uh, yeah with the stone horn hunters that would definitely be a much better uh scenario for the ogre kingdoms but these are only regular stone horns like a stone horn hunter can provide those anti large armor piercing damage to shoot down gyrocopters and damage thoric iron brow from a distance instead of charging in every time and just suffering counter attacks um iron guts did meh uh they are not the most amazing melee combatant just 
good. Like, they're decent. They're decent for their, their cost. Armor piercing, heavy armor, uh, and anti infantry bonus, but they just don't have the kind of elite melee stats like a uh, Crusher or a. or a. Man Eater. Okay, so. As for the Nobblers, they didn't earn back enough. Getting blasted by miners with blasting charges. Perhaps the only good low tier infantry against Nobblers are just miners. Just trying to like out trade them by burst bursting them down with those uh, explosions. But yeah, that's it for the second battle. Strike games once again win the battle this time with the yeah this time with Florig Ironbrow and Hans Valhersen using a bit of a dwarf hero hammer it's literally just the three single entities carrying the late game there and yeah before we go into the third battle let's just check out the um, let's just check out the chat and uh, see if I'm missing out anything Hans has about 11 point 1k HP after accounting for a 75% physical physical resistance. Wait, he has 75% physical resistance? What the fuck? I thought he only has 50%. Wait, hold on a second. I need to check. What? 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 CA, I thought you fixed physical resistance. What the fuck? I thought he. I, I always thought he has 55% of uh, physical resistance in line with the other ethereal units, but no, it seems that he still has 75%. I'm pretty sure this is like an oversight, but um, he also only has 2700 HP, so I guess. I guess that makes sense. Oh, he doesn't have spell resistance like the other dwarf, so he can be knocked down by Spirit Leech, but. You know what's gonna be infuriating? This. You have a healing ethereal thing with 75% physical resistance. And then you have uh, Felix healing him. So, uh, Hero Hammer is still a thing, I guess, guys. Uh, but yeah. Shit, he does have a lot of effective HP. Um, ethereal Dwarf heroes are underrated, but you you can only use Hans Valhersen in quick battles now. And I don't know if Fruit Rules allow the other... Um, Allow the other ethereal heroes. You can only use Hans Valhersen on uh, on ranked multiplayer now. So, like the others, uh, the other ethereal heroes might be good, but you just can't use them. Unfortunately, now that um, the Clan Angren is no longer a thing, and like now that Clan Angren is nothing more than a banner color and a, a color scheme, so. It's a bit sad. You can't use the other ethereal units. Definitely a considered Felix here, but Thane is really, really cost effective. Yeah, they are. They are. They are just cheap and uh, cheerful, but also extremely stubborn and tanky overall. But I do feel like Felix having that healing would be really key if you can just keep him alive long enough. But uh, keeping him alive long enough is definitely ch the challenge here. Um, he is not the tankiest character and doesn't have the most solid leadership either. But yeah, that is it for the second battle. I'm just gonna take a water break, uh, and uh, we will move on to the third battle next. Okay. Um, okay. Let me just um, get this. Now, third battle, this time Dark Elves versus the mighty Chaos Dwarves. Two A-tier factions. I do think they're both A-tier factions clashing against each other. Let's see who's gonna win. And, oh boy, there's a super weapon, the Daemon's Tongue, Iron Daemon here. Um, they do have some pretty good... Um, pretty. They, they are kind of broken these days. So, let's see if they can challenge the lore of Soul Stealer on the other side. Uh, with, ooh, the Chaos Dwarfs brought their own type of healing. That's a Demon Smith, and uh, a Demon Smith can probably put out some. No, they probably brought Reforge. Just to keep the construct 
keep those demon engines um, high in HP. Now for the army builds here a line of shades, regular version, so just decent melee stats and uh, nothing too insane. Forty, they have forty melee attack. Okay, that's pretty high in terms of uh, melee attack. They just don't have the um, weapon strength to really do the damage. But uh, yeah, Halibur Nine mixed in with Bleak Swords and uh, on the other side Red Spears. Some Dark Riders on the flanks and also Cold One Knight. And right at the start, the Halibur Knight is already blasted by the flaming attacks of the Demon's Tongue. Accumulating a lot of damage. Oh god, what the fuck? It just nuked like one-fifth of the HP from the Hellebron Nye away. And a really nice burning head roasting lightly all these shades, doing some nice HP damage. But at the same time, Blazing Beards, um, they they do have a Silver Shield, but that's a lot of armor-piercing missiles focused firing on them, and they're taking a lot of damage right now. Oof, it's painful. And on the other side there, the Koa Knights have collapsed onto the flank. They're trying to push back all those goblin labors. And uh, as for, okay, and we need to slow down to just check out the remaining units of the Chaos Dwarfs. Goblin labors mixed in with more goblin labors, some hobgoblin wolf riders, uh, wolf raiders, bull center and there's two of them with great weapons and more, and the blazing beards as well. The blasting charges have been used up half and uh, have repelled successfully one of the bleak swords, but there are still so many dark elf infantry right now. Um, there are some chaos dwarf warriors in the, the fray as well, while the bull centers are trying hard to push the back line. Over here, we have a sorcerer, sorcerer prophet of fire. He does have a few abilities and items, including the chalice. Blood and Darkness, providing a plentiful healing to himself, Burning Head, and the Cascading Fire Cloak for a little bit of a dueling power. He's on a great Taurus, so like he has the Flaming Breath. And um, he has dropped down into the melee combat at the back there, routing off the Shades. The two Koa Knights are collapsing onto this single entity fight here, with the Sorcerer Prophet dueling against the Supreme Sorcerers of uh, Lore of Soul Stealer. At the back there, the um, Kirstoff backline is compromised, but they don't really have much of a backline. While the Demon's Tongue is plowing through all those Dark Elf, Dark Elf formations, a nice burning head, roasting the shades, and probably gonna hit the other as well. While over here, a devastating Soul Stealer. Oh no, that it hurts, and it's damaging heavily the Sorcerer Prophet of Fire here. The Sorcerer Prophet of Fire tries to get out, but it's it might just be too late here. The balance of power is slightly in favor of Chaos Dwarfs, but the Sorcerer Prophet of Fire is taking a lot of point blank shots from the Shades and being pursued by the Black Dragon, he is taking a lot of, a lot of damage. And every time the Supreme Sorcerer cast spells, it will be a Soul Stealer that counteracts his uh, healing item. And on the far side there, the Bull Center uh, renders have taken quite a bit of damage, while the Demon Smith Sorcerer of Death Magic will be moving in. Trying desperately to chase down, hunt down the Supreme Sorcerers. The Demon's Tongue was also chasing after the S Supreme Sorcerers, but that opens him up to the focus fire of multiple shades. He doesn't have much um, defenses other than a bit of physical resistance, and the armor piercing missiles are quickly turning this battle in the favor of the Dark Elves here, as the Demon's Tongue is uh, losing rapidly losing HP. The Sorcerer Prophet of Fire tries to hold on to melee combat with a bit of Cascading Fire Cloak, but he got quickly routed by a couple attacks from the Supreme Sorcerers being uh, juiced up by the charge bonus. The Demon's Tongue is now running forward with more power, accelerating his speed, trying to get into melee combat as soon as possible, but alas, it might just be too little too late, down to 700 HP being charged by the Koan Knights. Um, the infantry fight is a bit of a blob here, with just Bleak Swords trying to tie down um, the Goblin Labors and any dwarf elite inf Chaos Dwarf Elite Infantry. And uh, with the Demon Sun dying, the Sorcerer Prophet being routed, that's pretty much it. That is basically it. And Strat Games will be winning the third game in the Best of Five series, taking the grand title of a champion as uh, in the Ladies' Quest Tournament. Truly, truly, the chosen of the lady. But yeah, the bull centers just took a lot of damage. Uh, most likely just trading against uh, Koa Knight, who both of them has armor piercing and anti-large. And uh, 
just not having a great time against each other while the shades also got a little bit of a window of opportunity focus firing down some of these blue center renders dealing with one of them the other uh, survived till the end but uh the battle got cut short by sjmg uh, noticed that everything like the key targets are the key units on his side are dead or routing and will no longer give him the support he needs to turn this game around. Especially a Supreme Sorceress of uh, Lore of Soul Stealer. Still there, still having Soul Stealers available to heal herself back up and do damage. And yeah. Now for the army performances, um, the Core Knights, one of them did really well, the other two not so much. It's mostly the Shades carrying the game. Um, JMG did a really good job pressuring off the Shades in the beginning of the battle, but there are not enough assets to follow up. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the Hobgoblin Wolf Raiders got thrown into the frontline engagements very early and took a lot of losses. And as a result, they do not have the um, HP and leadership to hold their own in mid-game, where they could have been held back. Uh, avoiding engagement in early game and just got thrown into chasing down the shades uh, around mid game. So the shades were able to recover and just shred through all the HP on the Sorcerer Prophet and the uh, Demon's Tongue as well. For the infantry wise, they didn't really do too much here. Uh, most of them were just focusing on tying down the Chaos Dwarf infantry as they do not have the wide army they need to push the missiles right now uh having only six melee infantry units there are more than enough bleak swords and dread spears to just hold them back yeah there are seven seven uh seven dread spears and bleak swords and uh they successfully held back all those uh, goblin laborers and kill stop infantry preventing them from threatening the shades and the Demon's Tongue did a lot of damage. It is certainly a broken unit. Um, with some ridiculous attacking animation, splash damage, hitbox, hurtbox, uh, recognition. and uh, But yeah, the rest of the Chaos Dwarf infantry and mobility didn't do that much damage overall. And uh, just kind of faltered. They do not have the leadership to do much. And the uh, single entities here... The Sorcerer Prophet of Fire did some good melee damage at the beginning, but then once the Soul Stealer starts kicking in, draining its health while replenishing the health of the Supreme Sorceress, things got a lot... things became a lot more different. Like the... the Supreme Sorceress is just tankier in general. So yeah, that is basically it for the entirety of the Ladies Quest Tournament, I believe that the actual stream for this uh, tournament finale was on HDS channel, I forgot, uh, I think he's a French or Spanish streamer on Twitch, I think. But yeah, anyways, um, but yeah, uh, I didn't, actually uh, Strike Games reached out to me to, and see if I could have uh, cast this uh, best of five on the stream live yesterday but i was uh one i have some stuff other stuff to do also other commitments and uh and then i also have to host the um, shitty build tournament so i wasn't able to cast this live but still really grateful uh, still really grateful for uh strike games to send me those replays and um odm for inviting me to cast this fine um tournament finale um special thanks to hanadins for organizing everything yeah, Tanodins, yeah. Tanodins organizing this. Yeah. Special thanks to Hanodins for organizing everything in the tournament. This has honestly been one of the more long term investments I had into the tournament in general. Like, there have been multiple seasons and all that, and. And this. I would say that the Ladies' Quest tournament has. Ha is really well organized everything is going smoothly um and er the instructions are clear and yeah it's been a very enjoyable experience to both play in the tournament and casting the tournament there's still a lot of replays that um a lot of content creators still haven't touched and i will be casting more of the replay uh, more of those replays in the future like um those in those in the quarterfinals and in the semifinals 
they are still sitting in the fo Google Drive folder in replay f in the form of a replay file. So I'll be uh, spending some time casting some of those battles so I can show everyone some even uh, even more tournament action. And yeah, before the next Ladies Quest tournament, I guess we just have to wait a bit, uh, especially now that we are having uh, another DLC dropping soon, probably by the end of. August. They did say they are dropping the yeah. They did say they are dropping the DLC in summer, right? In, on the roadmap, so they have to be dropping it somewhere by the end of August, right? Like, but like, 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 I don't have any news from CA at all because I'm I'm just a small streamer who doesn't really uh, contribute to the their um to their. Uh, Creator Discord, but like I I don't even check news on there actually. Uh, but yeah, anyways, if I remember correctly, the roadmap was like sh scheduled the next DLC by the end of summer, by the by summer, uh yeah by summer, um twenty twenty three right. So they have to like push it out by the end of August, right? Because after that, it's going to be autumn. But yeah, every time, I swear, every time CA now release anything, it's going to be like right on the deadline of things. So yeah, I don't think there's going to be any more long-term tournaments before the DLC come out and everyone has a set consensus on the DLC quality and the meta. Um, but I'll still be, I'll still try to host more tournaments. Um some meme ones mostly um, in the future, in the foreseeable future. Like uh, if they are assuming they are releasing the, they're releasing some of, releasing the DLC by the end of August, I can probably host something around mid August. But anyways, uh, before the DLC comes out, we just kind of have to wait right now. And uh, not that we can do much about it. Uh, God damn it, CA. Uh, but yeah. That's gonna be all for today. I hope everyone enjoyed uh, a few battles. They, that was a pretty quick uh, best of five, to be fair. But yeah, GG to both players here. Congratulations to Strike Games for winning this tournament and becoming the champion of the lady. Uh, of the lady. Of the lady. Something like that. But yeah. But yeah, and uh, now, yeah. JMG also putting up a great fight overall. That was. Those. There were some pretty cool, close games in um, this best of five series, and I do look forward to seeing more replays coming in as uh, we host more events. And uh, in a few hours, we're gonna have another tournament happening. Uh, tournament. It is a tournament of tournaments. The reason why is that uh, it is a tournament hosted by Cool Umbrella, where he groups up all those. Uh, all the past winners of Friday Night Fights or um, or other similar qualifiers to his uh, big final tournament before the next uh, big patch. And uh, it is going to be the a big stomping. Uh, it's going to be a cool scrap for sure. It's happening in roughly two more hours. So I'm just going to go and grab dinner uh, and prep myself for that fight. Uh, barely won. Barely won the last fight. Friday night. Sorry. Barely won the last Friday night fights to get qualified for that one. So I am in the big boys club now. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, I hope everyone enjoy the battles. Big thanks to all the players who have played in the Ladies Quest tournament. You guys have been putting up some amazing fights. It's a very cool. Those are some really cool action. Uh, I'm going to be casting some more battles later for the tournament. And yeah. Thank you for watching and I'll see everyone in the next one then. Uh, Tactical Itch, signing out.